Hey everybody, it's Josh. I think that we need to understand that everything that we know about Christ must be filtered through the knowledge that he is God. Many believed him to be a great teacher, which he absolutely is. Some believe him to be the greatest prophet. Some believe him to actually be the Messiah or even a God, a small G God in their mind, in the case of some Hindus. But if you look at the context of his life, his words, he is the creator of the universe. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Lion and the Lamb. He is the Almighty God. Now, yes, he might be different in the fact that he is God who limits himself. But God the Father limits himself as well. He doesn't want to... Well... Let's just say he has a plan, and that plan requires us to have free will. Now, <clears throat> it could be any number of things for the, as to the reason why we have to have free will and why things have to play out according to the fallen, according to the consequences of that free will. But people say, when asking, if God, why evil? If God is so good? But what you're not understanding is, the, the polar opposite of that, if God came down and said, I am God, this is the power, you disobey me, you're going to go to hell, you obey me, you will have an eternity of peace in heaven if he says this we are slaves if he says this we are no better than robots now why would he not do that the biggest reason I can think off the top of my mind is why would he do that God can create anything including the outcome if he's trying to reach a certain outcome in a certain way, he would just make it happen. He doesn't need people. He doesn't need free minds thinking. He doesn't need creativity, anger, love, hate. He doesn't need any of that. In fact, any darker emotions are ones that we created. We created because our nature cannot accept for the most part that we are not gods ourselves. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, the tree of knowledge, they did this and they instantly had the understanding of a god, a small g god. They instantly knew right from wrong. They instantly knew shame and guilt and jealousy and lust. They knew all of these things, and it was a nightmare for them. Think about it. It's the same as any of the fallen angels. They have known the perfection, the glory of being one with God of being one with a God who is all good. And you say, well, if he's good, then why did, why did he have the Israelites kill the Canaanites or, you know, any number of the hordes and cities that they told him to drive the people out of, that God told the Israelites to drive the people out of? 
to me that's easy god must intervene at a certain level he must reach out because there are fallen gods before because there are fallen angels he must save his chosen people he must keep them from complete annihilation while it feels like we are being thrown to the wolves we are not being thrown to the wolves as i said jesus was our life vest he was god in human form to come down to save us to keep us completely from destruction now this is not some magical cure a little sweat bee flying around me this is not some magical cure to where all of a sudden christ comes down and he says i am god which no matter how much people try to tell you he didn't say this he did the the pharisees understood the jews understood he was saying he is god before abraham was i am he was the only according to the muslims who thinks he's a prophet he was the only prophet who accepted worship it is clear he was there to show us not in clear terms because remember he can't show us in clear terms he was there to be a riddle wrapped in a mystery but also for those who see the very threads the frayed threads of that riddle and follow it to its center we find salvation we find complete heaven within this hell that we are living in and of course i don't think i've never thought life was living hell until the last few years of my disability when everything was going wrong there was dying suffering and death all around me suicides miscarriages constant pain both physical and mental of course i thought that was hell and i see you turn on the news you look outside you see riots you see just people who are so angry and half the time they don't even know what they're angry about they lack purpose they lack meaning think back to covid during the lockdowns they wonder why people went crazy first of all if you think about it hard enough it seems like somebody wanted that to happen but that's just a theory that makes both the most sense to me but during covid we had our purpose stripped from us almost everyone was in the same boat as i was who was on disability i'd had my purpose stripped from me you know what was 10 years before that So we had to give up our livelihoods. People had to lose their businesses. Everything had to be shut down. Now for a couple days, it would have made sense. All right, so you understand what's going on. But that wasn't how it was. It was a systematic takedown. Because if you have your purpose and your livelihood stripped away from you, you are desperate to find a purpose and there are powers evil powers in this world who will point you in the right direction 
points you in the wrong direction, but the right direction for them. They will point you towards destruction. They will point you towards murder. They will point you towards all kinds of gruesome things. Telling you, you are the one in the right. Because you are justified in that rage. You are justified in that jealousy. You are justified in everything you do in the name of these things. During 2020, I did not find God yet. But I was starting to. I began that year... I told myself that year I was going to go out in the woods every day as much as I could. And I took my girls out with me when I could, and I stayed out there, and, you know, unless it was a day that was 100 degrees out, I would go out and just, just explore like a child. When I was a child, everything was, was a great exploration and it was all unknown to me I went out and I loved living life I think that's why so many were awoken starting that year even if it didn't happen that year even if it happened two years or more after like it did for me that is when my eyes were starting to get pried open And I was starting to understand and see the reality. That there's no purpose in this life that's going to last. There's no meaning in this life that's going to last. There is only God. And there is only one true God. And Christ our Lord. There is no other figure who has changed the world. There is no other figure who has been a force of good, a force of purity upon the world like Christ has been. Jesus will always love you. The question is, will you love him? Now, this is something that, that most take for granted. We try to create God as I often say, in our own image. I see it nonstop. We are all sinners, and we all have desires of this world that seem almost impossible to control. I say that because I still, knowing the glory of God, I still commit these sins. But the love of earthly desires, the love of this world, the things in this world, material things, even the love of one another, the way that we know it in an elementary type sense, that weighs down our soul. If it is not on a foundation of pure true love that Christ brings us, it will crumble. I don't care how strong you think your love is. I don't care how strong your earthly desires are or how dug deep into your identity you are. It will crumble. Each time we give in to them, we turn from God. When you give yourself to Christ, you will know peace and purpose beyond anything you imagined. There is no other way. There really isn't. When you feel the serenity of salvation, it is the ultimate purpose, the ultimate meaning in life. You will feel love that transcends everything of this earth any even love for children which is to me the purest love that we have 
It transcends even that. And it gives it a foundation. It gives it proper footing to exist on so that it will not crumble, so that it will not be shaken when a child lets you down or a child strays. You will not be left all alone when a husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend leaves you, goes out cheating on you and, and laughs in your face. You will not be left alone. Sure, you'll be heartbroken for, for a little bit. But as long as you have that love of God there, the everlasting love of Christ will sustain you. You know, there are... I read about it a long time ago. There are actual cases of people dying from isolation. And in that isolation... Well, think about it. Why would someone die? Why would we go crazy if we are not around people enough? Or at least out among animals or, you know, plants and trees, nature. But we really do need human connection or we will turn into an animal ourselves. We will turn into an actual working on instincts animal. And in isolation completely, we will die. We need connection. And why is it that some people during COVID did so great and had such a great time, even when they were locked up? And why others seem to go crazy? Well, I can tell you that some people have found that peace within themselves. Some people, even if it was just the calling of God, have found God. And then some people, well, some people have that need, but they don't understand why they have to be connected. They have to, they just have that draw. They can say, oh, I want to be alone. And even if you're not alone, you can be lonely. And you can be alone and not be lonely. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you understand it from a biblical point of view. A philosophical point of view, I guess, at least. We are like this because we need the ultimate purpose that others bring us. We need the ultimate hope. We live on just a few things. We live on love, we live on hope, and we live on purpose and meaning. With those three things, if we have all three of them, we are golden. It doesn't matter what cards you're dealt in life, we will be successful, we will be happy, Successful as far as finding meaning in life. Because obviously we have that meaning. You can live, be living on the streets and have more meaning in life than someone living in the biggest mansion. With the love of Christ, with the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the peace that it gives you and the hope that it brings you, we can walk through we can live through dark and horrible suffering and find that they are not some hellscape they are not some curse in our lives they are simply the prophecies of peace in the future and so we it gives us that hope to keep moving through the darkness. Now, I beg of you, the biggest question I hear from young Christians or, you know, Christians who are, might be lukewarm, is something a sin? 
stop thinking and overthinking about is this a sin? Is this not a sin? Am I living in sin? What, am, I, am I being... That's not what a relationship with Christ is about. We have... The most important thing that we fail to understand, as, as a lot of Christians do, is it's not about the moral code only. That's part of it. The moral code comes after the relationship. The relationship is key. I don't care if you are living in the worst sin you can possibly imagine. You're out there and you're a serial killer, I guess. Is, you know, you're abducting children. When Christ comes to you and changes you, you will have the need to repent. You will feel the sting of your sin. I've said it so many times. Every time I sin now, I picture in my mind that it's just another lash. That it, it's, it's the skin breaking from being whipped all over. It is a nail in the hands or the feet. It is raw skin rubbing across splintered wood. And those were just the things of this world that I know, that we know that Christ went through for our sins. There must be so much more outside of this reality and the spiritual or the divine, I don't know. But there must be so much more that he went through just to save us. Now think about it. Is there any other that you know who can go through that suffering because they love you so much? I don't know anyone. All right, everybody, that's it for today. I love you all. God bless.